Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, this one took a bit longer to get out. I've had a bit of a prolonged cold, uh, but we're still in here. Um, so this is going to be all of the new kanji from uh, Wanikani level five. Um, there are still going to be new unique vocabulary that we have to run through after this, um, about a hundred or so. Um, but for now, Let's just focus on the kanji itself. Um, so first, we've got angle made up from the radicals for prison and task. Um, it's going to be pronounced kaku here. Um, so in prison, your task is to bend things into different angles and then put them into or put them in the corner. Uh, no one will tell you what you're why you're doing this, but you get a couple cents an hour to do so. So you aren't going to complain. So the angle to get the angle right, you find that you have to cock your head to the side a lot. After cocking your head at weird angles so much, you also start to hear cocks crowing in your head. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. So then we got cockoo here. Imagine cocking your head to different angles and hearing cocks crow every time we do. Prison isn't as fun as you thought it'd be. Manual labor and loud chickens aren't what you expected. So this guy's got kind of that like yada yada does it kind of kind of look to him. You know what I'm saying? Got his head cocked to the side. Uh, we got the chickens around him, cocking that head, cocking that look at a weird angle. That's what we got to remember here. Uh, alternatives reading. Alternative readings we have are corner and antler also. Next, we have keen for axe. We've seen this once before. Uh, also used as a counter for uh, bread loaves. You imagine being back in time. Uh, good too good and now you're stuck using an axe to be a bread loaf counter for the king king of england you aren't sure which king he is or when in time you are but he he's mean and he keeps eating all the bread you cut up with your axe imagine being stuck using an axe on bread while the king of england glares down at you munching and spilling crumbs every king for axe next we have say for blue uh We've seen this before. You've been feeling really blue, mostly because your skin, hair, and eyes have all turned blue. Uh, the Shogun, Shou, uh, found out, and now he's back. Um, I was trying to see if that's another reading. I'm going to assume it is. Uh, he places his hand on your shoulder and then points at your saber. Say, it's blue too. You are in a low. Got a blue sword. Feeling blue. Holding your saber. Say. Tai for body look at this girl she's got a cute body got a cute body uh she's a leader as well because it's made up from leader and book so we have her reading a book on how to tie a tie uh the leader's body also taught her about something very body specific how to tie a tie tie you can have a tie on your body or you can't have a tie on your body no 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 those are for the leader and her smart body i guess this is what a smart body looks like uh picture the leader reading a book Putting a tie on her body. Look around at you and your family and your neighbors. You don't know what your body and beat bags do. And you don't know how to tie a tie. Wom wom. Iru. We've seen this before. Uh, you already have color on the mind because you know the meaning of this kanji. So think of something colorful about yourself. Imagine your ear. Iru being a weird color. In this case, we've got a green ear. Rai for cum. Made from ground and rice. Uh, there's rice spread out all over the ground. This will cause the predator to come because he loves kolme rice. Then, once he's gone, the next predator will come to eat. When they come, though, everyone is disappointed. It turns out it's rye grains, and rye grains taste terrible. Yuck. If you love rye grains, on the other hand, imagine being really happy that they came to get the rice. They're so lucky it's rye. Rye, come. Xia. For a company made from spirit and dirt. Plant a spirit in the dirt before you start your company and it will be successful. That's what all the great Japanese companies did back in the olden days. That's why companies like Mitsubishi have been around for hundreds of years. They planted a spirit in the dirt and helped their company grow and grow it did. Where did you learn about this method of company growing? From a shaman, of course. Shamans aren't just spouting nonsense. They know what they're talking about. And spirits are right up their shaman alley. Imagine going to a shaman and having them tell you that for your company to be successful, you need to bury a spirit in the dirt. 
so it can help the company grow. You should probably listen. Look at all these businessmen looking at this shaman in their in their old olden Japanese company. They learn from the best, and the man in touch with the spirits is going to be a shaman. Shia for company. Toll for correct. Made from the radicals for a triceratops and wolverine. There's a triceratops and a wolverine. What are they doing? You'd think they fight, but they took their battle to another venue. They're competing in a game show. One of them answers a question, and the host says, Success, you are correct. When we need to remember the toll reading, we use the Japanese city Tokyo. The last question in the game show match is the following. What is the capital of Japan? The Triceratops and the Wolverine scream the correct answer at the same time. Tokyo. Correct. Wow, that was pretty, pretty easy to get right. Uh, Tokyo is what pretty much everyone would guess, and they'd be correct. There's something about the look in Wolverine's eyes here in the, in the Japanese audience member in the back that really does do this for me. I also kind of think this radical looks like a, well, not this radical. This kanji looks like a piece of cake with like a candle coming out, out of it. Um, that's the correct candle right there. Pole. Diagram. Zoo. The treasures are in the mouth where there's ice. This is made up from mouth, treasure, and ice, if you will. How cryptic. You want to find the treasure, that's for sure. Treasure is great. It is somewhere where there is ice, so maybe the Arctic? What, it, what you are looking at is a diagram, which will guide you there. Imagine looking at the diagram or map. And it has pictures of, of treasure in an area where ice is. This is where you'll find the mystical treasure. The diagram will show you the way. You're excited that you found this map. What will you do when you find these treasures that are shown on the diagram? Well, you get there and you find that the treasure is actually a woolly mammoth. What will you do with this woolly mammoth? You grab it and you put it in your zoo. Your zoo. Imagine dragging a woolly mammoth back with you to town or the city you live in. Then throwing it in a zoo to be kept. People are quite amazed by this mystical creature you found, though, which is pretty cool. Uh, so he's holding this map here to kind of represent this diagram. You can think of it as a diagram of the zoo, if you will. That's holding this woolly mammoth. I'm guessing it's a mammoth because it's an ice treasure, if you will. Uh, diagram, zoo. My for every. Uh, made from gun and window. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, you've seen some window. You see some windows. You have a gun. What do you think you're going to do with this gun? Of course, you're going to shoot the windows. Every single one of them. Each and every one. Now that each and every window is broken, you feel pretty stupid because there's a bunch of mice come pouring in through them. You've made a way for them to get into your house. That wasn't smart. So I'm thinking it was like, we got these two mice and they come out here blasting. Uh, they're shooting out this window. They got their their guns here. They look like a little ray guns. Not to be confused with the reading for ray. Uh, but they got these guns, and they're shooting out this window. Uh, they do it every day. My Nietzsche, my Nietzsche. Every my mice in the window. Uh, feather, Hane. We've seen this before. All these feathers. You're a bird man slash woman, and you're getting ready to fly. Just as you're about to take off, someone dumps you with honey, and you're all goopy, unable to go anywhere. So these kind of look like wings. Um. Uh, if you want to think of them that way, and the, the drops in the middle of each wing uh, represent the feathers, or maybe that's the honey that's holding the feathers down. We got goopy feathers. Uh, so remember, remember feather. Fourth, Hayashi. Uh, this one's got the radical for, for tree kind of repeated a little bit here. Um, so now you have this force and you want to cut it down. So much money, but you don't have any tools, only your hands. You think, I've done karate for a while, so I can probably chop it down that way. You get in a chopping stance, then you do your battle cry and hit, hi, she. Or maybe he's going like, she, because he like hit hit himself and it hurt. Um, obviously, that didn't work well. You want to focus on your battle cry. Plus, uh, indecent, indecent swearing right bef right afterwards to remember this reading. Got to remember, got to remember the swearing. You ain't nothing without a nice little swear in there. Go, um, for, oh, this is go, and it's pronounced ko, featuring Koichi. Uh, oh, did he go again? When go when Koichi is not around, that's what people often say, because he does go to the gyoza restaurant almost every day. 
Goichi loves Gyoza so much. You always know where he is when he's not home. Think about handsome Koichi over here eating that gyoza. He goes for the gyoza. King for gold. We've seen this. Uh, the most gold in the land belongs to the king of England. In fact, you've never actually met someone with gold. It all goes straight to the king whenever someone finds some. You have a few pennies to work with. And we've got King Ki from Megami Tensai over here. Um, as well as uh, this pile of gold with this uh, pheasant here represent Pokemon Gold version, because I associate that with gold, because I've got a Japanese copy. He's got this kanji right big on there. Um, gold, king. Kusa, for grass, made up from flowers, sun, and cross. You plant your flowers in the light of the sun in the shape of a cross, because it's too hot, and the sun is too strong. You end up with grass. Flowers can't grow in these conditions. The grass on top is brown and burned from the sun, so you'll need to take a cool saw, cool saw, uh, and hop the top saw. Uh, saw is actually physically cool to the touch, um, and this helps the grass's sunburned bits. It just happens to look cool, too. It is a cool-looking saw, admittedly. Imagine using your cool saw to saw off the heads of all this grass. It made the cross pretty big. So there's a ton of grass to get through. The sun is beating down on you and the grass is too, which isn't making it any easier. But you do have a cool saw for grass. Hometown, Sato. I like to think this dude's name maybe is also Sato. The village you always think of first is your hometown because it's made up from the radical for village. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Needed a little drink there. Uh, your hometown is where you sat, Sato. Uh, nostalgia is tugging at your heartstrings amid the endless rice fields and dirt. Uh, visualize yourself sitting in the home in your hometown. The village's rustic charm evoking nostalgia. This guy's got kind of a nostalgic look to him. Sato for hometown. Saku for make from leader and key. The leader makes all these keys and put that puts them in a sack. Saku to distribute them to the underlings, who then saw them into shape. Um, the leader's key is the key that makes all the other keys. It's sort of like the one ring to rule them all, the one ring to bind them, except with keys. Imagine the leader making the keys and dropping them one by one into a big sack. He's always walking around carrying a big sack over his shoulder, distributing the keys to his underlings and watching them saw into shape. Many, top. Uh, how many evenings on, are there? There are many. So it's made up from the radical for evening. We just kind of have like two of them stuck together. Many evenings. To remember the ta reading, we use the word taco. Uh, let's start with the kanji meaning many. You go outside in the evening because that's what this kanji is made up of and are surprised when you are hit by many tacos flying through the sky. For some reason, it's raining tacos. And of course, you have no idea why. The tacos pelt you and knock you off your feet. Hard shell, soft shell, meat, lettuce, tomatoes, cheese. It's terrible. I don't think that sounds terrible. There are so many of them flying down from the sky to drown you in tacos. It's absolutely absurd. And you should think that too so you remember the reading. It's got kind of like a cloudy with a chance of meatballs feel. Except I think this, this girl is much cuter than anyone from there. Though I do like that film. Um. I do look that like that Flint Lockwood kind of energy, Mr. T energy. That the show would that definitely have many tacos raining down on people within it. Ta. Miku, for me, we've seen this before. Uh, it kind of looks like that nai uh, kind of kanji for inside. You know there's people eating going on in there and with kanji. So when you think of this meat, you'll have to think about whose meat it is. In this case, this is Nick's meat. Nick Fury over here grilling this meat. Uh, inside your head, you can only think about people, people, and more people. This is bad, because really all you want is that meat, because you're some, some kind of sick cannibal, you monster. When you think of people in your head, you're really just thinking about more meat you can eat. Look at it. Kai, to meat, or just meat by itself. Um, under the hat, there are two people meeting in private. Look at them hu huddled up in there. They must have a reason to want to meet in such a private place. That's not for you to judge. Maybe next time you have to meet with someone, you'll hide under a hat with them too. And it looks like one of those rice paddy hats. What better way to meet new people than to start kayaking? 
kayak, get into your kayak and just float into the water. You'll eventually bump into someone else in a kayak and boom, you're meeting someone new. I met my soulmate in a kayak, said Koichi. Mix, coal made from lid and father. Uh, you put a lid on your father, but he won't taste good alone. So you mix in some other ingredients. They mingle inside the pot with it. They mix together. This may seem traumatic, but actually your father's surprisingly into it. Imagine him mixed in with all kinds of other things. It's important to note that this kanji is about being mixed in, not so much about the action of mixing. That's another kanji. Important note there. Um, with the mix of your father and other ingredients mingling in there, um, in your cooking pot, you lift the lid and, and your father, uh, Koichi, he stares back at you with a big smile. I love mixing in with potatoes and tomatoes, your father Koichi states. Turn up that temperature. I like to mingle with a bit more tingle. Oh my gosh. All right. Where is this ming coming from? Is this is this another reading? Uh, someone in here knows? Let me know. But yeah, Ko, Papa Koichi getting mixed in there. Looks like this could be something from Food Wars. Is it's kind of in there. You know, that's Koichi. Uh, near Keen. Got kind of the scooter look there, and we got axes uh, as they draw near. You recognize who is riding the scooter, the king of England. Behind him are a bunch of his guards, also on scooters wheel and wielding axes, and they appear to move close to you. The king is now so near to you. His nose and mustache are tickling your face. He's holding the axe high above his head, saying, I can't get it. I can get as close to you as I want. You can't stop me because I'm the king. I can get so close. Look, I'm not touching you, though. He's kind of weird, kind of a weird king. Want to get all up in my grill like this, getting close? I don't know about this, but I do like his scooter. Uh, the scooter entourage army with the axe, that's a good look. We can work with that. Near. They get near to you. Older brother. I think this is about halfway through. Kyo. Uh, who's someone who's just a mouth with legs? That's what this is made up of, mouth and legs. That's your know-it-all brother who won't show shut up about anything. Uh, to ho help this monomic law, literally imagine your older brother as someone that's got a giant mouth with a pair of legs walking around, talks and talks and talks, too irritating. You feel the irritation specifically at your older brother. He's older than you, so you could beat him up too. Uh, and in this case, it, older brother is a big dude. He's got long legs. We can't really see his leg here, but we can see that he's a big man. That is big bro for sure. Uh, you wish you could box your loudmouth older brother up and send him flying away to Kyoto. Uh, Kyoto is super far away from where you currently live. So just ship your older brother off so he can never bother you again. So here he is. He's on his ship. He's going to Kyoto. Big mouth, big legs. Hmm. Don't you want to go to Kyoto someday? Maybe you should have sent your older brother somewhere less cool. Kyo, older bro. Ame, for rain. We've seen this before. I kind of like this image. Uh, what if the rain actually tried to aim for you? As in, drops would move out of their normal flight path just to hit you on your head. That'd be a lot wetter for sure. Um, so you kind of take an aim at the rain, if you will. Ame. Let me get a drink real quick. Bay for rice. I think we've seen this before. The rice radical and rice are the same in looks as well as meaning. This also refers to America because America is covered in rice fields or something. I don't know. Uh, Manamic, you get tons of dry grains of rice. You have no idea what to do with them. Then you come up with the solution. All this dry rice go towards filling up the bay. So you have more land to farm on. In your mind, bulldoze the rice into the into the bay, watching it fill up, then pile high. It's not particularly good looking land, but it'll do. And it's already full of seeds, so that's pretty good. The important thing is that you have way too much of the stuff. So the only way to get rid of it is to dump it in a large body of water. And that large body of water is a bay. Just you in the bay chilling looking at this beautiful bay, not so bad. Kind of looks like rice, too. That helps. It's got kind of like the little grain sticking out here. You can think of it as like the, the rice plant in the patty with the roots coming out. You got two grains on the side. Rice. Bay. Run. So, 
people have seen this before. You run and you run and suddenly you feel your soul leave your body. Still running, you turn around and you see your soul running a few steps behind you. Uh, see this person running? Don't confuse it with the foot though. The head is just a streak because the person is running so fast. That's the radical. Um, running really takes it out of you. In this case, it takes it out, takes your soul out of you. Don't worry. When you stop, your soul will collide with you again and everything will be okay, probably. Same. Dole made from mustache and ground. So we've got these donuts on the ground over here. Uh, and we've got this donut man with this mustache um, to help cement the, the radicals in place here. What we need to remember is the reading. Dole. We, we we will use the word donut. Uh, while this is already strange enough, you notice something stranger. Over a couple feet away is a donut who also has the same mustache as you and the one that fell on the ground. Donut looks at you for a moment and then scampers off. The donut must be a mutant because normally donuts don't move. If it helps, imagine hundreds of thousands of donuts all around you, all with the same exact mustache. First of all, it's terrifying to be surrounded by thousands of mutant donuts. Secondly, it's really weird when they all have the same mustache as you. Dole for saying. Genji for say. Kind of looks like, like a Wi-Fi kind of signal coming out with the words. Maybe it's got a little lid on it too, depending on the font mayhaps. Uh, there's a bunch of sound waves coming out of her mouth. The waves represent the things you say. You aren't sure what to say. Just, if you aren't sure what to say, excuse me, just think about Genji and ask yourself, what would Genji say? He was a bit of a smooth-talking man, from my understanding, a bit of a womanizer. Um, so Genji, Genji was saying a lot of things to a lot of ladies. <laughs> excuse me. We got G for self. Ah, there's a little flex slash drop on your eye, and that's what makes you unique. It's what makes you yourself. It's you, you know? And when we remember G, we use the word Jesus. Who said you should always look at yourself before tossing stones or whatever at others? That's Jesus, baby. Jesus did. So make sure you look at your own self before tossing stone and being a jerk. You can feel free to do some introspection here. Look it out over the lake. Think about Jesus tossing stones. You know how it is. Shape. K. So we got a little cake made up from lantern, so it's glowing. It's got hair on it, too. Very interesting kind of lantern. Uh, you're, you're always walking around at night when you discover a lantern covered entirely in hair, making it a very strange shape. In fact, it is a form you'd never expect a lantern to take. You stare at the shape until you recognize it. It's cake. Cake. Uh, well, it's a hairy, glowing cake, but it's still shaped like a big slice of cake. Picture the shape of this hairy, glowing cake. That's a cakey kind of lantern. K. Skin. He. Had a kind of like he for, for sun, if you would. Uh, slide down a branch. It's made from sliding branch. Uh, and your skin will come off. Unlike what Tarzan will make you believe. You can't just slide around on branches. They're rough and painful. And if you do, your skin will come sliding off and it's going to hurt. Without your skin to protect you, you feel the full heat from the friction of your body going down this branch slide. Admittedly, this branch slide looks kind of sick. I do like it. Your skin protects you from feeling really, from feeling lots of heat. It gets burned before you and has many tiny layers to keep you safe from heat generating things like the sun. You really need your skin. That's an understatement. Skin, he. Sky, poo. Made from roof, legs, and construction. So if you had a construction with a roof running, that might be a house, right? Giving a roof legs is the kind of construction you do. You make it so a roof can be in the sky. Additionally, the meanings to the meaning sky. This kanji often means empty. Think about it. There's nothing more empty than the sky. So you got you got to frame this with the sky for this phenomenon to do us some good. You got roof with legs running off, bright blue sky. The reason you want to put a roof in the sky is because it, it gets the roof away from all the cu cooties that are on the ground. This dude is running from all these cu the cooties that are out there. All these honey, say cooties, nice and long. Just like a little kid to emphasize the long vowel in it. Coot for sky. Sound on. Uh, made from stand and sun. Uh, 
For some reason, you are standing on the sun. It's obviously very hot, but the things you notice most is the sound of you burning up. The sound isn't just loud. It's familiar. Finally, you place it. Onions. The burning sounds like sizzling, crispy onions being fried in a pan. Listen close. It's exactly the same. You can almost smell the onions, too. So I was thinking this guy's out on a sunny day at a concert. This concert's like being hosted by onions for whatever reason. So he's out here. He's in this field. Got the sun out here. And it, it's loud, man. What is going on? Sound. Gaku for study. Made up from a Viking and, and child. So we got a little Viking child over here. They're getting taught. You have a wild Viking child you have to take care of. Won't do anything but study. Surprisingly, you can't get them to eat use the bathroom, or anything else. They just want to study. Of course, this isn't what you would expect of a little Viking child. It's the opposite. That's why it's so surprising. They love to study. The crazy Viking child who prefers study over pillaging and other Viking activities. The other Vikings just stop and gawk at him when they walk by. Gaku. They gaku at him. Oh. You should tell the other Vikings to stop gawking at this child. Just because he likes to study doesn't mean he's a bad Viking. Well, these guys are all kind of encouraging. They have no enemies, if you will, Finland Saga peeps. Uh, but they, they do study, and they gawk while they study. You gawk it. Die for substitute, made from leader and ceremony. This one was confusing me because I, I saw the ceremony, and I would just go off with ceremony in and of itself. Um, the leader of the ceremony can't come see, can't come, so you need a substitute to replace them ASAP. The substitute is wearing the wrong colored clothes, so you have to dye them like you did in the olden days. In the olden ages, excuse me. Now you're back with the original teacher and the substitute leader trying to dye the color of the stupid shirt to match that one. So they're getting ready for the ceremony. You got a substitute teacher for your ceremony. I don't know what kind of ceremony. Maybe a graduation, middle school graduation. Who's to say? <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, substitute, die. Coal for sunlight, made from triceratops and pie. You see triceratops in the distance, but it's odd. It's perfectly pie-shaped, that is circular. Some kind of high side teratops, if you will. The reason they are this shape is because they want to absorb as much sunlight, or just light as fine too, as possible. They evolved to be round, so they don't have any corners casting a shadow. As you watch this majestic beast absorbing the sunlight, suddenly su several dozen feral koichis burst from various hiding spots, spears in hand. Oh no, these koichis are hunting this rare pie-side teratops. Imagine many different, but also kind of the same koichis attacking, throwing spears at the pie-side teratops. But because it was able to charge up in the sunlight, it uses its power to shoot light in all directions, rendering all the koichis momentary blind allowing it to escape. I feel like this timeline, they've made peace with one another. They both hurt each other. But now it's time for these guys to just chill. Pie side terror tops and the, the rabbit Koichi gang with spears. They're all just chilling. They're all just basking in the sunlight, eating pie. Sunlight, coal. Think, also coal. Uh, made from coffin and beggar. In a coffin, is someone begging, but it won't work. You won't listen. So the man in the coffin just begins to think, what could have been done better in my life? Why am I in this situation? How will I get out? Think, damn it, think. What is the beggar thinking of? That bubble pops up into existence near his head. In it, a picture of Koichi. He's thinking that if Koichi were here, he'd save him. Oh, if only Koichi could save us all. There he is, handsome old Koichi. In the coffin, think. Then the beggar realized that it, he is Koichi. You're burying Koichi in a coffin, alive, and all he can think of is himself. That's the man. That's messed up. Koichi, or just Ko? Excuse me. From coffin and beggar, meaning thing. Hi, times. This is kind of a disturbing image. Kind of a Junji Ito kind of look. There's a mouth inside of a mouth, but you look even closer. Not actually, but. We're pretending. And you can see another mouth inside that mouth. And another one inside of that one that keeps going and going. Count the number of times there's a mouth inside a mouth. 
This kanji also means revolve too. Think of each time a thing happens, it looks back around and comes back to the beginning, revolving around again another time. We're going to pronounce this one, Kai. We're going to pronounce many times. Uh, if you're having a hard time wrapping your head around the infinite number of times these mouths revolve, just picture yourself in a little Kai. A little Kai. Uh, going around and down through the mouths. Kayak is sloshing and dripping through these revolving mouths, going down and down more times than you can count. Times, just kind of these dudes revolving around each other. Tani for valley. There's a hat decorated with fins and presumably fish mounts on it too. Who wears strange hats like this made from fins and hat and mouth? Turns out the valley people are the ones who wear these. I'm thinking about the Valley Girls, California kind of valley. You know, Hollywood, L.A. They're into the crazy fashion. They'll wear anything if it's deemed cool enough or something like that. Hanging around with all these Valley Girls in the sunny area of L.A. is also a robot. It's a wa it's a Wally kind of robot. Wally's distant cousin, uh, lazy, lounging around relative called Tani. Tani. He sits around getting a tan in L.A. with the Valley Girls. While his cousin picks up the trash. Not a bad deal. What a jerk he is. A man of the deep tan lines on tan E as well. He is the epitome of robot laziness. Tani. Let me get another drink real quick like. <clears throat> Voice. We got Koi. You have a samurai with a flag on a stick. It's made from samurai, flag, and stick. On his flag is a symbol for the kanji for voice. Why does he have that there? He feels like his shogun isn't giving him his fellow samurai a voice. So he's brought a flag with the ver word voice written on it to protest. Once you start asking the samurai more specific questions how he wants more voice, he starts playing coy with you. Koi. Uh, he doesn't really know what he wants. He's just here for the sake of protesting. Then you ask him on a date. He still plays coy with you. One of those samurais, I guess. One of those samurais, I'm going to say them, Koi boys. Koi, for voice. For West, we've got Say. You have pie coming out of your mouth. 3.14, it says, We must take the secret of the circle with us, away from here. We must take it to a magical place where nobody will persecute us for our math. Place to the West. People are attacking from the West. So you pull out your saber and you beat them back. You keep pushing further and further west until you reach the ocean and there's nowhere left for them to run. Picture yourself fighting your way west, your saber shining in the light of the sun as it sets in front of you. You protect your home from the west if it takes everything you and your saber have left. Got, so here you are, coming off to the west. We've almost routed these guys off the cliffs. You jump heroically onto your horse, wielding your mighty saber. To take out these western varmint. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> West, got a little carried away there. Say, uh, as in the saber that you're holding. Nani? Uh, what? It's made from leader and a lip ring. Our leader has a lip ring. Wait, our leader has a lip ring? What? Uh, the leader with his lip ring is now eating some naan and curry. It's delicious, of course. But then he gets a cod on his lip ring. And the tear rips his lip off. He screams, Nani! In anger at the non and the curry. I'm thinking he's kind of like a punk rocker. Maybe he's a band leader, right? It's because we got that, that leader radical in there. Um, so we got his lip ring and the, it came off in the curry. Uh, make this one vivid and scary. He's eating the non. That's your non. And then he screams at the non. But he gets overwhelmed with pain. That's the nani. Smell the nod. You're there. And you see the blood gushing out of his lip. It's terrifying. How did the nod even catch up on his link lip ring anyway? Interesting. Nani? Mugi? For a week? I was thinking about Mugi from uh, K-On! Blonde hair girl, thick eyebrows. You know the one. Um, Made from life and winter. For we Interesting. Mugi. The life radical is without the, the slide, as it always is. 
or as it, as it sometimes is, excuse me. But when you combine that with the winter radical, you have life during winter. And what gives you life during winter? It's the wheat you store away, baby. You found your wheat. Thank God, you'll survive. You have to take the wheat back to your house, though. On your way, you get mugged. Imagine the disappointment. Go from finding life to losing it all. Now you have no hope for the winter. Also keep in mind that Mookie and Mug aren't super alike, so you have to get used to kind of making it close enough to remember what the actual reading for Mookie is. The younger brother, Dai. So we got horns, we got a bow, we got a stick, we got a slide, we got a bit going on here. I feel like bow is the one that looks like it kind of stands out the most prominently, and he got some horns on that bow. Uh, there is someone with a bow and a stick, wearing horns, going down a slide. What type of person do you imagine? I'd say someone who's an immature boy. That would be your younger brother. I'm a younger brother myself, so I'm picturing myself here. Your lo younger brother loves playing dress-up so much, that now he's starting dyeing his hair all kinds of colors. Imagine that bright red, blue, green, purple, purple dye in his hair. He's just got green, green dye here. Got big bro kind of look at him and like, what the heck, man? He's got his bow. Imagine the bright red, blue, green, purple dye in your younger brother's hair. Put so much on there that he's dyed half his face, too. He's going to be in trouble when he gets home. You know, big bro's looking at him with his bow. Like, you, best, you best not let pops find out what you did to that hair, green boy. Die. He died it. Younger brother. And you know what? That's going to be it for this little go around here today. Thank you all for listening. Hopefully my voice didn't sound too messed up from this cold. And you have yourself a good one.